Server Name Indication, or SNI, is an extension to the TLS protocol that allows a client to specify a host to which it wants to terminate its encrypted session. In this short video, we're going to look at why SNI exists and how it works. On the left, we have our client at 20.1.1.1, and it has a browser open. In the browser, someone's typed HTTPS www.abc.com. On the right is our server, which is www.abc.com, and it's at 30.1.1.1. Now the first thing that's going to happen when the client connects to the server, of course, is a TCP socket will be opened between the two. So there'll be a three-way handshake on TCP port 443, which is the standard port for TLS. So at this point, there's a TCP socket open between two IP addresses, and no more information than that has traveled between them. At this point, the client wants to make sure that it can establish an encrypted channel before it sends any HTTP data to the server. This way, it can both authenticate that the server is abc.com and also make sure that nobody eavesdropping on the connection can see any of the data that it's sending or receiving to the server. The first thing the client does is send a client hello message to the server. This message indicates that it wishes to begin an encrypted session and that it needs to negotiate the parameters of that session. Included, among other things, in this are a list of the versions that the client supports, a list of cipher suites that it supports, and some random data that will be used later on in the handshake. Now the client is waiting on the server. What it expects to come back from the server is a server hello message. And included in this message are going to be some of the same things. The server is going to choose what version they both support. It's going to choose a set of cipher information that they can use to encrypt this session. It's going to have some random data in it as well. And here, what's most important to our conversation, it will include the server certificate. And what this certificate will include, uh, beyond just the public key and some other uh, extension information, is the name of the server to which the client is connecting. So there'll be a common name field, and there'll also be subject alternative name fields. And somewhere on here, the client has got to see www.abc.com. This must match exactly what is in the browser. If it doesn't, the client will terminate the session. Up to this point, there's really no problem with this transaction. The server knows that it's hosting www.abc.com, and so it sends the certificate across, and everything's good. But consider that the modern internet is filled with servers which host more than one domain. So say that this server, it does host abc.com, but maybe it has another tenant or just another virtual host, which is xyz.com. So this would not be able to be accomplished using a wildcard cert. What I mean by that is maybe there's mail.abc.com and api.abc.com. And so on the certificate, we use a wildcard, uh, star.abc.com. The browser would be okay with that. Uh, it would certainly terminate the session without complaining. But we can't do the same if our entire domain is different. If we also have xyz.com back here and it has mail dot and api dot, the server really has no idea which certificate to send back to the client. So this is why SNI was added. The client can now specify in its client hello message an SNI field which states the host name to which it wanted to connect. So exactly what was typed into the browser, or what is being specified by the application for that matter, can be populated in that field. The server can parse it, and it knows which certificate to send back to complete the encrypted connection.